So let's talk about Aliens, the sequel to Alien, directed by James Cameron. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to you as the Big D, so I'm going to be bringing to y'all another her review of the Alien franchise. This time it's Aliens, which is turning 35 today. Now this is more of a sci-fi action film, not sci-fi horror like its predecessor. The film was written and directed by James Cameron after he did The Terminator. As the sequel to Alien. Now, we have Sigourney Weaver back as Ellen Ripley, the sole survivor of an alien t attack on her ship from the first movie. When communications are lost with a human colony on the moon on which her crew first encountered the alien creatures, Ripley agrees to return to the site with a troop of colonial marines to investigate. This also includes Michael Bean, Paul Reiser, Lance Henriksen and Carrie Hinn in supporting roles. Now, despite the success of the first movie, it took, its sequel took years to develop, and it was delayed by lawsuits, a lack of enthusiasm from Fox, who released the film, and repeated changes in management. So anyway, Cameron was hired to write a story based on his scripts for The Terminator and Rambo, First Blood Part 2, which came out the previous year. Well, but the project was stalled until Lawrence Gorin, the new executive for Fox, advocated for a sequel. Well, apparently Cameron was given the role, although relatively inexperienced, based on his success of directing The Terminator. Anyway, this was really something. So let's go ahead and get into the story. Ellen Ripley has been in stasis for 57 years in an escape show after destroying her ship, the Nostromo, to escape a lethal alien creature which slaughtered her crew. She is rescued and debriefed by her employers at the Wayland Yutani Corporation who are skeptical about her claim of alien eggs in a derelict ship on the Exomoon LV-426, since it is now the site of the terraforming colony Hadley's Hope. After contact is lost with the colony, Wayland yutani representative Carter Burke and Colonial Marine Lieutenant Gorman ask Ripley to accompany them to investigate. Still traumatized from her alien encounter, she agrees on the condition they exterminate the creatures. Ripley is introduced to the colonial marines and an android named Bishop on the spaceship Sulaco. A dropship delivers the expedition to the surface of LV-426, where they find the colony deserted. Makeshift barricades and battle signs are inside, but no bodies. Two live alien face huggers in containment tanks and a traumatized young girl named, who was, well, not named, but nicknamed Newt, are the sole survivors. The crew locates the colonists beneath the fusion powered atmosphere processing station and heads to their location to send into corridors covered with alien secretion. I mean, secretions. Sorry, I misread that. My mistake. <laughs> At the center of the station, the Marines find the cocooned colonists serving as incubators for the creature's offspring. The Marines kill an infant alien after it bursts from a colonist's chest, rousing multiple adult aliens who ambush the Marines and kill or capture many of them. When the inexperienced Gorman Pax Ripley assumed, well, her command and takes control of their armored personal carrier and rams to the nest to rescue Corporal Hicks and Privates Hudson Vasquez. Hicks orders a, the dropship to recover the survivors, but a stowaway alien kills the pilots and it crashes into the station. The survivors barricade themselves inside the colony. Ripley discovers Burke ordered the colonists to investigate 
that the relicit spaceship contained the alien eggs, intending to profit by recovering them for biological weapon research. Before she can expose him, Bishop informs the group the dropship crash damaged the power plant cooling system. It will soon explode, destroying the colony. He volunteers to reach the colony transmitter and remotely pilot the Sulaco's remaining dropship to the surface. After falling asleep in the medical laboratory, Ripley and Newt awaken to find themselves trapped with the two released face huggers. Ripley triggers a fire alarm to alert the Marines who rescue them and kill the creatures. She accuses Burke of releasing the face huggers to impregnate her and Newt, allowing him to smuggle the embryos through Earth's quarantine. The power is suddenly cut, and aliens attack through the ceiling. And in the ensuing firefight, the aliens kill Burke, subdue Hudson, and injure Hicks. Gorman and Vasquez sacrifice themselves to stall the horde. New to separate from Ripley and captured. Okay, now to the final act, the ending. And the ending, of course, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, continue on after the five seconds are over. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Ripley and Hicks reach Bishop in the second dropship, but she refuses to abandon Newt. The group travels to the processing station, allowing a heavily armed Ripley to enter the hive and rescue Newt. Escaping, they encounter the alien queen in her egg chamber. When an egg begins to open, Ripley uses her weapon to destroy the eggs and the queen's ovipositor. Ovipositor, sorry I mispronounced that if I did. Pursued by the enraged Queen, Ripley and Newt join Bishop and Hicks on the dropship and escape moments before the station explodes, consuming the colony in a nuclear blast. On the Solaco, the group is ambushed by the Queen, who stowed away in the dropship's landing gear. The Queen tears Bishop in half and advances on Newt, but Ripley fights the creature with an exosuit cargo loader and expels it through an airlock into space. Ripley, Newt, Hicks, and the critically damaged Bishop enter hypersleep for their return trip to Earth. End of story, my friends. So, what did I think of Aliens? I'm gonna say I liked it a little more than the first one, but don't give. But you don't have to take my word for it. I like them both for different reasons. Now, cause while Alien had more more horror in it, this was just more sci-fi action, what have you. But hey, it's still understandable, don't you think, man? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's now considered to be one among one of the greatest films of the 1980s. And one of the best sci-fi or action films ever made. And one of the best sequels ever made. And it has been called equal to or better than its predecessor. I actually kind of do agree with. Aliens is credited with expanding the franchise's scope with additions to the series lore and factions such as the Colonial Marines. Anyway, with its effect on popular culture and fan following Aliens has inspired a variety of merchandise which includes video games like an arcade cabinet done by Konami, comic books, and toys. There'd be two more sequels after this, Alien 3 in 92 and Alien Resurrection in 97, which weren't quite as successful as this one, and then two, se two prequels, excuse me, which were Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And I and it seems there's going to be a fifth one to come up, which is, has been in development since last year. Nevertheless, the film went on to become a big success for, for the studio. And apparently it was just, wow. 
Now, years late, a few years after its release, there would be an extended cut of the film, including scenes deleted from the theatrical release, which CBS aired in 1989. There would be an extended edition with more deleted scenes, including the opening scene of Newt's family investigating the Derelicted Spacecraft, released on Laserdisc in 91. And the extended cut is 20 minutes more than the theatrical cut. The extended cut is 157 minutes. Yeah. Incredible, huh? Now, the extended edition was released on VO and DVD in 99 as part of the Alien Legacy box set. Anyway. So, overall, uh, This had a, a ton of action, and the film went on to make, well, it's kind of in between 131 to 183 million worldwide, uh, and became one of the highest grossing films of 1986. Also, there was James Horner, who also worked on um, the Terminator's soundtrack as well, uh, on board so that was cool. With him on board doing the score, James Cameron doing the direction, writing the screenplay, and co-writing the story with David Giller and Walter Hill. The great performance by Sigourney Weaver, plus Michael Bean as Dwayne Hicks, and Paul Reiser as Burke, Lance Henriksen as Bishop, and young Carrie Hinn as Newt, whose real name was Rebecca Jordan. That was all good, plus several others, including, and let's see, Bill Paxson, Jeanette Goldstein, Mark Rolston, Rico Ross, Daniel Cash, Tip Tipping, and Trevor Steedman, and many others. That was a pretty good cast, so enough said about it. So, would I recommend Aliens? Hell yeah! This is one flick you need to see. It was so much fun. It was epic. It was exciting. It was fun. I gotta say, it's probably my favorite of all the Alien movies, but if I but if I do reviews of the others, but that's probably gonna be a ways, though. Because uh, I know a lot of people weren't too comfortable with Alien 3 and same with Alien Resurrection, which, again, I'm an understanding person. I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Alien 3. Alien Resurrection, well, factually an okay one. But let's just let's just try not to jump to any conclusions, okay? But you will get reviews of the rest of the Alien series down the road. And, well, if I get a chance to watch Prometheus one day, I've yet to see that movie. But just stay tuned. But anyway, what are your thoughts on Aliens? Do you think it's the best one? Do you think it's anywhere better than Alien? You can let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned, I might begin my chance to do the Space Jam A New Legacy review. I hope. But, um... But soon you can get some more reviews coming up, including my final two Summer of 007 reviews for this month in the form of The Living Daylight and also uh, License to Kill. And and also, on the same days those two will be premiering, I will review the two G.I. Joe movies in order to promote the release of Snake Eyes. And plus, you'll get reviews of the Cinderella Story franchise as well. So anyway, thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other ones I've done. In the upper left-hand corner is the review I did for Independence Day. The upper right-hand corner is my review of The Tomorrow War. Or, if you just want something else, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my spoiler-free review for the new Netflix action thriller known as Gunpowder Milkshake. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.